Hey everybody. Hi Trina. Hi Francine. Hey Kendra. Can you guys hear me okay? Hi Joyce. Hey Mary. Hi April. Hey Patty. Francine. Okay, just want to make sure everybody can hear me. I'm doing the wireless mic again. Hi, Paula, Terry, Kim, Dim, Kathy. Um, I did a bunch of resining this weekend, so I'm going to show you guys all the resin pieces before I start anything. Alan is giving his brother a shower, so he's running a little late. But... Um, we have time because I'm going to do some things tonight before he pours. Um, one of them is mixing the base paint today. We're going to do that. Um, hi, Shirley. I'm not going to be able to see all the comments, and I'm sorry if I miss anybody. I can't sit over there and do it. But I did resin. Um, this piece that we did the strainer. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Lynn. Hey, Bev. Um, this is a flip and drag that I also did a resin on. The colors are absolutely beautiful in this piece. Those are two. I did eight, actually. Okay, let's see. Oh, Dragon Eye. This is the Dragon Eye. It came out really cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. This was a flip and drag as well. Um, I think I had it going that way. They're all beautiful. The finish on them is just amazing. I think I may not um, <laughs> use varnish anymore. I know resin's expensive, but if you guys could see these up close and in person, you'd say, oh, I'm never going to use varnish. Um, realistic Sky Pearson, your paint consistency is be the same as um, what I did on the mixing video. If you haven't watched that yet, check it out. This one I resined as well. Yeah, the Dragon Eye is awesome. Alan loves it. And this one as well. It just makes the paint deeper. And I got two more. And the other thing that's nice about resin, they dry in one day. So you don't really have to like set them to cure. This was an older video. Um, this was the Envirotex Light. Um, I do have stone coat that's coming, um, the art resin. I have the countertop resin right now that I'm going to try out tomorrow. And um, Mike has um, asked me to, to he's going to be a sponsor for my channel, and we're going to do a little bit of resin work. And then this one here. Yeah, it does make the paint pop, that's for sure. So that was what I did this weekend, besides putting stuff away. And if you guys have been on Amazon today, you know how much stuff I probably ordered. <laughs> Those paint block, they were all coated with resin, and it's the Envirotex Light. 
I'm just reading some comments real quick. Um, Cynthia, when you want to clean your cups, I use three buckets of water. Um, one hot soapy to soak them first, and then one hot soapy to wash them, and then a warm one to rinse. I don't do it in my drains. I dump it outside. Um, I have a septic system, so I do everything in the garage. Yeah, Joyce, I hear ya. I um, actually bought a Yeti microphone and a webcam that we're gonna try to film with, so it'll be cool. So since Alan's busy and I can't read all of those comments, is it okay if I mix up the white base paint first? So this paint I buy from, oh, and I gotta tell ya, Jerry's Artorama is running a huge sale. It started today. Um, these are $12.21, but you have to buy four to get them at $12.21. Um, there's so many colors, but I buy, um, when I don't need the colors, I just buy the white and the black. So I got, I think I bought two more of these white ones and two more black ones. And they had the um, Soho paints on sale. The Soho um, acrylics. I bought, these are 250 mil. I bought the great big tubs, the um, 500 mil. And I want to say they were 650. So the tubes were probably for something. I wish I had it up, I could tell you for sure. But the little tubes were $1.50. So if you guys need paint, hit Jerry's Artorama. If you spend $35, you get free shipping. So you can't beat that. And they also had um, Grumbacher on sale. And what was the other thing I bought? Oh, I bought the medium. I bought the Creative Inspirations medium because I want to just try it. So... We will, that was Kingsley. Kingsley is my other son. He works with my husband. I didn't notice you, Kingsley. I'm sorry. <laughs> Till just now. He calls me by Tina, because that's what most people call me by, or uh, my friends call me T. So, just so you guys know. Hi, Jenny. Okay. We're going to make a mess now. So I'm going to just glance at the screen every so often and see if I need to answer something. If I miss your question, please ask again. All right. So mixing base paint for your... <laughs> hey, Vic. There's my cousin. <laughs> So I need some water and some Floetrol. All right, guys. So the best way to mix the base paint is to use a big jug. You can store this. It's not going to hurt at all because you're not putting any medium in it. Oops, I'm going to drop that ring in there. Alan will be here shortly, I promise. He's hurrying. So I've got about, uh, let me do about a cup of paint. Okay. So I grab my mix and stick. I wanted to get right in and do a dirty pour first thing, but he wasn't ready, so. We will wait for him. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of Floetrol to loosen that up. And I found a, a purpose for those great big bottles. So you want to stir it till it's smooth. Are all my moderators here tonight? I seen Trina and I think that was Nicole that just popped. Yep. 
That's good. We'll keep the trolls out tonight. So I'm going to add a little bit more Floetrol. So on the base paint, um, Linda, I either use um, Liquitex gloss varnish or resin. I strained that before I put it in there so I didn't have, to, it had a lot of boogers in that gallon, let me tell you. So right now this would be our paint pouring consistency, but we don't want that for background paint. I don't know if you guys can see how it runs off the stick. It's still a little too thick for me. So I'm going to add a little bit more Floetrol. So I pretty much quadrupled what I put in there. And a lot of times I'll just dump some white craft paint in here. I'm in North Carolina, Jenny. So right there, it's pretty good. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of water. This is the only paint that I add water to. Anything else, I do not add water. Yeah, pantyhose work great. Just put it over the top of your um, Floetrol bottle or gallon. Oh, it's hot here too. It's still a little on the thick side for me. Well, the reason the white is so thick is because it takes a lot of pigment to make white. So that's why. Come on, screen. There we go. Are we back now? I hope we're not going to have this problem tonight. We got spoiled for a couple weeks and didn't have a problem. Okay, I think I'm there. Kingsley's on. <laughs> so is Vicky. <laughs> Ellen just popped his head in. Are you almost ready, babe? Huh? That's fine, yeah. He's coming, Nick. Okay, so I've got that right where I want it, and I'm going to show you when I pour it on the canvas how thin I like it. And we're going to go ahead and do a flip and drag while we're waiting for Alan. While we're waiting for demand. So hopefully when we get our Yeti mic, um, he'll be able to hear both of us. So did y'all watch my paint mixing video? Yes, Alan's gonna pour tonight. As soon as I'm done with this one, I'm gonna make him pour next. How's that sound? Yeah, watch that paint mixing video. Um, I don't use water in the paint, so. And I tried to be as, ex as precise as I could be so that you wouldn't have any questions about mixing. So we're going to go ahead and do a gallery wrap. It's a 10 by 20. Let me see if I got you guys crooked there, don't I? Sorry. There you go. Is that better? And I'm going to go ahead and put this white down so you can see how it works. And this is fresh, so we're probably going to have a few bubbles. So I just kind of move it around the canvas first to get it going to see if I need a little bit more. And I do.
No, I do not put PVA in the base paint. Only in um, the other paints. This is just pretty much coloring the canvas for me, so um, it has a, the white has enough binder in it that it'll be fine. You can put PVA in there if you want, but you don't need to. You're going to add water to it, and you don't want the water to break down the PVA anyway. PVA is um, Elmer's glue all or bookbinder's glue. Come on, paint. Um, stay away from the school glue, guys. I know people are going to argue with me on that one, but it doesn't have as much binder in it because it's not, a, it's not an all-purpose glue. It's just for gluing little things together. I wouldn't use the school glue. It's easier for me to change my gloves than to try to wipe all that white paint off. It's almost the same price. If you get it on um, on my link on Amazon, it's about the same price as the school glue anyway. And I thank you for everybody that used my link and went and bought stuff. That was awesome. So I get a little bit of commission on your purchases. So not a lot, but a little bit. Every little bit helps. And yes, Mylene, I've been thinking about you, honey. All right, so I'm, I already know what colors I want to use on this whip and drag because I kind of looked at that other one I did and I really love that Naples yellow. So I'm going to do a little Naples yellow and I'm going to use the Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt Blue Hue that I love so much. And I'm going to use a purple. I'm going to try the Soho Dioxazine Violet that I mixed up. I have not used this yet. Yes, if everyone could keep Mylene in their thoughts and prayers on Thursday as she has her surgery, um, I really would appreciate that. Because we love her. And I'm going to put a little purple red in there. So I'll start with my little five ounce cup. Um, I have the WD-40 spray. Of course, everything's backwards for you guys. I'm sorry about that. I put a little bit in the cup and I'm gonna rub it in so that the paint does not stick to the cup. If you leave it in the cup, you will get some tiny cells from that, but not the big juicy ones that we like from the treadmill silicone. And all these paints have um, treadmill silicone in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, I think I'll start with the purple. Just about um, a tablespoon of each color is all I'll need. Here comes trouble. <laughs> Ellen has entered the building. I have arrived. You have arrived. Oops. Ellen wants to know if you have that on your Amazon. What's that? The WD-40 spray? Uh, it's in ketchup. I'm not sure. So there's my cup. I have not used three in one silicone. The only thing I've ever used was the blaster and the dimethicone and of course my treadmill silicone that I swear by. Uh, I need a skewer. Nicole wants to know how it's going. Well, it's going. I've already done my first pour. Yes, Alan did his first pour and he, last week and he's going to do one again tonight as soon as I'm done with this one. Thanks, Nate. So I was all excited. Was it Saturday? Sunday? Yesterday. I was all excited thinking Michael's had 70% off canvas. So I said to Alan, swing by Michael's and let me run in and get canvas. Well, what I didn't know is you had to order it online. 
so that you picked it up at the store. So I missed out. But, you know, I really didn't need any more canvas. I just wanted to get some 11 by 14s. <laughs> but I was going to use my sponsor money and give it canvas, but we'll use it when it goes on sale again. Did I miss the color wheel? Oh, the color wheel. I got to get that out, by the way. It's in that, underneath that Mark 10. Underneath the Mark 10, there's a disc with color swatches. Okay, that's the one thing. It's not really a color wheel. Look in the automotive department at Walmart for that WD-40. This is um, what I got from Jerry's. It's a color mixing cards. So like if you pick this color here, and you don't have that color paint. On the back, it will tell you to use one part sky blue and one part white. Um, this is based on this brand of paint. You can't see it because it's backwards. Gosh, I'm sorry. You're welcome, Mylene. But it helps you to mix certain colors, like that's a, their violet. Um, if you want to mix a coral, you can use two parts of permanent scarlet and four parts, I'm sorry, one part of that and four parts of white to make that color. So it's kind of fun to see how to mix colors. Oh, look at what came out of the cup. That is gorge. So I'm going to go ahead and work with what I've got here. And you know I'm going to go back in because I want to move some of that paint around. And I always dip again in the white. I have a lot of paint right here, so I have to move it. Okay, so we'll let that set for a minute. We have a few cells popping up through that white there. Terry says she needs part-time job. Of course, I have a full-time job to support mine. <laughs> Although I did cut my hours back to 32 hours a week, so I had more time to be out here, but it works. You want to fill that for me, hon? want to fill that for me? Just push down. Okay, so I'm going to move this a little bit. Alan's filling my torch. I'm going to go ahead and take that right off that top edge. Because I want to bring some of that yellow down. I didn't look at Harbor Freight to see if they had it there. That's good to know. See, you never had a daughter, so you can't say what Shirley did. She said her daughter's clothes and paid for paint Yeah, I need a daughter, don't I? Jake! Who doesn't know sleep here? I don't sleep. I was up till what time, Alan, last night? I don't know. Two? It was after that. What time do we go to bed? 3.20? <laughs> Jenny says her video is boring. Um, down at the bottom, Jen, I believe it's on this side. There's like a little nut there. If you click on that, you can go in and adjust your picture to 720. It'll be in HD. I don't think you filled this very well, Ellen. Maybe my can was empty. Yeah, if I could stay up all night and paint, I would. There, now it's full. Take that. Because that's when nobody's bothering me at night. And I, that's not insane. No, 320's norm for Alan on a Sunday night. He usually works does his planning for the week for work. Okay, so I got a couple little spots that I want to pick out some little dark things. 
And you guys all know what's coming next. The airbrush. Yeah, my kitty doesn't come out here too often. When he doesn't like Zampy, what do you want? Go find somewhere else to go. <laughs> Eddie comes out here though. Barry says her great Dane and husband snoring when she paints. I'm just pushing this out, filling up the canvas. Cause I love to do that. Margaret says it's creative around. what I would do. If I didn't have to get up with TJ in the morning, that's probably what I would do. I want to show you guys something before I even go near this with an airbrush. Look at that little, oh gosh, I wish you could see it the way I see it, that little orange and pink area. It's so pretty. It's like got little dendrites on the end of it. Yeah, I've only got one. I uh, I have two dogs. So I'm just slowly pushing that out just a little bit more because it's so pretty without losing it. So I'm going to go get new glasses next week, I think. I need them badly. I'm going to go ahead and cave in and get the old bifocals, I guess. Probably because I waited so long, I'll probably have to get trifocals at this point. That felt good. Dropped the airbrush on my foot. No, this airbrush is on my Amazon shop. The links are in the description um, for all the tools that I use. And all your supplies are there as well. The popsicle sticks, the everything's there. I got everything covered for you. The washing machine trays. I had someone um, send me a message about using the trays from dog crates. Um, the replaceable trays, they're not quite as big as the washing machine tray, but price-wise, I would say they're pretty similar. So if you can't find a washing machine tray, you could always get one of those. Don't ever be afraid of that airbrush. It is your friend. <laughs> it is your friend. This is 25 PSI, and I can show you. This is what you get on my Amazon shop. Oops, I gotta wait till I move that painting, guys, sorry. And then I'll show you. Oh, now it's gonna be too loud. I gotta put it back down there. It's not super loud, but it's loud enough that uh, your, my viewers know. So once you get that pushed out, you can go back through and just take bits and pieces here and there and just feather them out a little bit more. Now that white base paint was fresh, so it's just being a little stubborn with me tonight, but not, not too bad. Now, Jenny says she has Amazon Prime. You want to mention anything about Amazon Prime? Amazon Prime sale today. I got I got a blue yeti. Um, normally they're about 169, I think. I got it for 80 bucks, so we're really hoping that we'll be able to figure out a way to use a different microphone so you guys can hear Alan as well. So that's it, guys. Isn't that cool? The colors are so pretty mixed together. I love yellow, that yellow Naples, Naples yellow with that turquoise. And this will dry just a little bit darker, but we're getting some wonderful cell action on the edges. Carrie wants to know, what's a blue Yeti? 
A Blue Yeti is a microphone that you can adjust so it will just pick up voices or sounds. It has a lot of, um, you can tweak it quite a bit. Jen, you heading out. She says thank you. Bye, Jen. I'm just going to pull this one skin here because it's just too pretty to waste. This is photo paper, Kodak photo paper. Um, this is a satin finish. You could use gloss or satin, but I'll use this for jewelry when it dries. I'm going to go ahead and torch it, get a few cells in there. Isn't it pretty? So I didn't waste too much paint there. Okay, I'm going to clean up my spot and guess what time it is. Okay, uh, Mary wants to know, where do you get the white tiles you use? Um, I buy them at Home Depot, and they are $11 for $100. They're Dell Tile, my hometown tile company that closed, but I always supported Dell Tiles. So. Action Jackson, what's up, girl? Action Jackson, what's up? <laughs> That's Alan. Alan's grape juice, because our last name is Welch. <laughs> Terry wants to know, how do you use it in jewelry making? Um, you cut out, uh, the bezels are round like this, and you cut them out, cut the skin out. I have a puncher that does the exact size. Um, I use some E6000 glue and stick them in there, let them dry, and then I resin them. Okay. I'll be doing a video on that coming up here shortly, too. I've had a few people ask for that video. Carol is asking, is there a way to know how much paint to put in the flip and drag cup? I don't go any higher than my pinky. Like, if I'm going to pour paint in the cup, that's all the farther up I go. It's about a half an inch at the most. Less is best. Otherwise, you end up with too much paint on your canvas. And you'll have a hard time getting that flip and drag um, negative space look that you want. Someone was asking if you do a re uh, video on the resin. I am going to be doing resin videos. Um, this, my stone coat order is coming. They shipped it today. Um, so hopefully, maybe I can get one up by the weekend. I'm going to do an unboxing and I'm going to do um, a coating. We're going to do a couple videos on coating. And then we're going to go ahead and introduce the um, pigments and metallics, mica powders, and we're going to go ahead and start making once a week we're going to do um, a resin painting. So if you just want to learn how to resin, that's... I've been watching Erica and Jeff at Artist Till Death. If you guys have been watching them, you can learn quite a bit from them. But we're going to go ahead and learn it together. Night, Vic. Thanks for coming, honey. Love you. All right. Ouch. We have a troll. A troll? Who's our troll? Get him, girls. Get him. <laughs> okay, Mr. Welch, it's all you. Go get some gloves on. Your puppy dog apron is over there in the chair. Somebody's looking for a friend? Yep. Is that the troll? <laughs> Thanks, Kendra. She got rid of him for us. Well, at least it's only one. We had, what, three that one night. Okay, um, that, you can't wear that one. That's not puppy dogs, that's kitty cats. Oh, I can wear that's kitty my cats. Varnishing, you got puppy dogs. That's my varnishing apron, sorry. <laughs> that's my OCD kicking in now. I gotta get all the microfiber cloths from it. They're all stuck to it. Okay. 
I washed it just for you, Al. I'm gonna get you a, you want a black one? Okay. I bought some aprons that uh, I got really cheap on kitchen stock. That's where I bought some bottles from too. And I bought a bun rack for resining. So that stuff will all be here tomorrow as well. We will be all set up and ready to resin. Okay, what color choices are we gonna have tonight? I know Nate, Pink last week. <laughs> Go ahead. You pick. You're on your own tonight. Get some gloves on first, though. Uh, Is Kingsley still here? Is he going to watch you? No, Nate said pink. no pink. All right, guys. Give Alan some colors. And, and I'll shout them out to him, and he can pick from there. Real men paint with pink. Nicole said blues. Lavender. Okay, Nicole. Purple, rusty red, peacock colors. Pearl, magenta and purple, gold, turquoise, black, sunset colors. Same colors you just used. Cadmium yellow. Ocean colors. Oh. Alan, you have two walls of paint bottles there to pick from. All the metallics are on the bottom shelves, so have at it, babe. <laughs> Bev wants you to do all metallic colors. Um, Nate said emerald, violet, and royal blue. Nancy said teal, chocolate brown, and burnt orange. That would be pretty. That would be Van Dyke brown, hun, that chocolate brown, if you want brown. But well, last week you put that steel blue in there by my choice, and I didn't like the way it came out. Van Dyke brown. <laughs> Shirley's asking if anybody wants a Coke <laughs> or something. <laughs> you know they're all going to order booze. <laughs> uh, Jerry. I just think it's kitchenrestock.com. Their shipping is high, but for the prices you get the stuff, it's worth it. Um, I got a six-pack of 12-ounce bottles, and those are the ones that Alan has on the table right now. They're two thirty-seven for six, but I buy in bulk, and my shipping's usually under twenty dollars. So you really, it comes out to about, I want to say almost a dollar a bottle, but it's still cheaper than anywhere else. And they have aprons, and they have the offset spatulas. Um, what else did I buy from there? I bought a bunch of stuff. They don't have, like, cups and, and stuff like that and gloves. They have disposable gloves. They're those real thin plastic ones. They do have aprons, and they're two, I want to say they're 267 for an apron. Very cheap. And they're nice. Um, I can show you one in the package. Yes, Alan, you have, um, what is it, like 60, 80 bottles of paint there? Yeah, it's all in a, getting a thick enough bottle because some of those bottles, they're so flimsy. You squeeze them too hard, the top pops off. All right, so this is the apron that you can get. It's a professional apron. It has the loop to go around your neck, and it has the really long ties, so you can go around the back and bring it back to the front. And this is the front, no pockets. So 
No pockets. No pockets. Wilson squeeze bottles. The ones I buy are Winco. I'll show you the box. The box. No, Winware, sorry. These are the ones from Kitchen Restock. And they do sell these on Amazon. I did add them, add them to my Amazon page. If you don't order them on Amazon, I think it's $9 for this. Because if you order this for $2.37 with the shipping, it may come out to that much. So you can still just get them from um, Amazon. Unless you want to order kitchen stuff. Like I bought tongs and all kinds of stuff. Did I get your canvas dirty, Alan? So sorry. Oh, I don't know if you're going to like that brown with those colors. I got to keep my mouth shut. You know, you're, you're teaching. <laughs> No, I taught you last week. You're on your own now. <laughs> There's a little spider. Rona, There's honest ball. to God, those ties are so long that you'd have to cut some off. I don't care if you weigh a thousand pounds, you still would be able to tie that apron. There, those ties are. I should measure them. Um, let's see. They've got to be a good five feet long. I can almost stretch my arms out, and that's just one side, so, yeah, they're really long. Okay. And we did get on Redbubble, guys, so if you like any of my... Neat. Um, sent me over there to um, add it to my list of things to do that like I have tons of time <laughs> um, but I do have the waterfall pour on there and a couple of bottle, bottle bottom prints that you guys can get pillows made out of or whatever you want okay so I need to prep the canvas canvas is already prepped honey I already taped it and put push pins and sprayed it for you it's all ready Base paint. Or you, should I go with black? Why do you need a base paint? You're doing a flip cup. Float. You want to float a cup? Do you want to float? You want to do a flip and drag? Is that what you're saying? Okay. What did you spray it with? Oh, the back of the canvas. I missed with water. Nicole, Nicole wants, wants you to do a float cup. You guys think he's ready for that? <laughs> I do have a pink, light magenta. He's got light magenta. What's the purple you have there? Purple I have is light violet from Artist Loft. Light violet from Artist Loft. Premier's purple red. Premier's purple red. Artist Loft uh, bright yellow. Artist Loft bright yellow. Soho's. Manganese blue is from Soho. Soho is phalo blue. Soho phalo blue. Okay, somebody asked, can you talk about the spray again? Oh, the spray. I just missed the back of the canvas with water and let it dry. Um, I prep my canvases in the in the morning. I'm ready to film at 9 o'clock. They're dry and the, the canvases are nice and tight. It tightens the canvas up for you so it's it should sound like a drum. You want your canvas nice and tight so your um, paint won't puddle in the middle as much. Down first. Put white down. Okay. Or should I go with black? It's up to you. I have both. The black is on the windowsill. We'll have to shake it really well. So should we do a negative space or should we go with the white? Possibly. You're doing a floating cup, right? Yes. Not so much a flip and drag. You're just going to float the cup around. I would go black. With those colors, I would go with black. Nate says black is blue. With those colors, yes. That uh, manganese blue would look beautiful with the black. So this is a teaching moment because this is Alan's second time. I'm sorry to keep you waiting.
Yes, Nate, our um, art tastes are pretty much the same, don't you think? <laughs> oh, you got that open? I can never get that open. Walk me through this. Well, surely we're, you're going to learn what a floating cup is, because Alan's going to do one. Alan's going to learn what a floating cup is. All right, go ahead and go around your canvas. It's OK if you use a lot, because we're going to pour some of it off anyway. Um, let me see. I should make you do this so you learn how to do it like icing a cake. Well, that's... <laughs> you're gonna need some more? No, you're good. Because you're gonna pour fingers and do your sides of your canvas. And then we'll have you torch the bubbles out. My mic's cutting out again. It's got to be because I'm sitting over here. Let me see. Could be the air conditioning, too. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Um, any restaurant supply store, Terry, you can find those bottles. Um, the one that I used was um, kitchenrestock.com. Every town has a well, I shouldn't say every town, but most towns have a restaurant supply place, and you don't have to own a restaurant to go in there. And it's not like Sally's when you need a card. What, hon? But it's not like Sally's Beauty. Yeah, it's not like Sally's Beauty Supply where you have to have a card to get hair color and perms. Well, check online, Terry. Um, there might be some more online, but. Um, like I said, kitchen restock shipping is a little high, but their prices are really cheap. Sorry about the area I was kind of... Okay. You might want to get a paper towel there, babe. Oh, I forgot to show that airbrush, too. I'm going to have to do that, too, after you're done. Yes, I have resin stuff sitting here. I need a bigger studio. I need another garage. <laughs> You're going to buy me a 16 by 20 shed and she make shed. it a she shed? <laughs> That's what he said. All right, torch it. Get your bubble out. You don't have to tilt that. Not so close. Six inches above the canvas. Don't want to burn your paint. Yeah, she she your shed. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> okay, go ahead and grab a cup. Size cup. Um, you're only going to need a five ounce or because you're going to float it. So you can fill that cup, though. Okay. Here, I will. Um, color. I'll shake your paints for you because that one right there is really separated. Do you want me to start yelling, Mylene? That way you wake up. <laughs> I can't help it if I am soft spoken. So what color are you going to start with, Alan? Uh, I think we need to start with a bright color. Like yellow? Like yellow. There you go. Looks like mustard. That's good. You don't want to go more than that. You can always do two layers of color out so that you don't have, you don't want to make mud. So I'd go with the blue next. Tell them what color you're using. Oops. Is that phalo blue? So he used cat yellow. I'm 
orange and green in my future. I agree, Nate. Okay. Okay. That's plenty of the pink. I'd follow that with violet. A little more, a little more. I know, but you're not going to be able to do a second row. I don't want to do a second row. Oh, you don't? Okay. Um, I dry my paintings about three days before I move them to a curing rack. They're you, if the weather's good, they're dry in about a day and a half. Sometimes you get lucky and they dry in one day if the paint's not too thick. I like texture on my canvas, so I always do my paint a little thicker. So it's smooth and bumpy and, you know, smooth in spots and bumpy in others where it shows the layers of paint. Shirley's still frozen. Try refreshing, Shirley. You can go out and come back in. We'll wait for you. <laughs> That's pretty full. Cup. That is full. Do you want to swirl it with a skewer before you flip it? I think we should. Okay. They can't see what you're doing at all, Alan, because you're not in screen. My apologies. There's his cup. All right, that's plenty. You're going to make mud. You might have already made mud in the middle. <laughs> okay, here's the fun part. You have to flip that cup. Yeah. Best way to do is put your hand underneath it. Hand underneath. Yeah, don't dry your paintings under a ceiling fan for sure. The top will dry and the bottom will still be wet. Yeah, so you're just going to do as fast as possible. Watch this, guys. Here we go. Here it goes, guys. Oh, well, at least your yellow didn't come out yet. You didn't spray our cup either. Oh, Alan, have I taught you nothing? <laughs> Good color choices, though. All right. I think we should pick it up and let the cup float. Okay, so he really wants to do a floater. A floating cup is not floating as much as it ought to be. Okay. We should be back now. Keep going. Don't be scared, Alan. <laughs> and every so often you can set the canvas down and let a little color out and let it you just take on the hardest stuff to uh, try. There, now it's floating pretty good. Try coming down this way. Mylene's getting nervous. <laughs> Mylene, there's nothing to be nervous about. Yes, this is his second pour. Mary's holding her breath. <laughs> Don't hold it too long, Mary. He's going to be a while. I'm holding my breath, too. Those colors look awesome on that black. You know, sometimes um, the best artists are people that overthink it when they're tilting. Um, he's watched me do so many pours that he kind of gets the gist of what he has to do. Wait, do you see what I do with the airbrush? Oh, he's going to play with the airbrush too. <laughs> oh, I'll be cleaning walls tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe repainting them since they're white. That's okay, because you're gonna tilt it yet, so. The yellows are starting to make the appearance. Yeah, when your yellow starts showing up, then you know you're getting to the end of your cup.
I'm so proud of you, Alan. You're doing such a great job. Miley wants you to do a swipe. <laughs> Maybe next week, Miley. <laughs> there you go, Miley. Next week. Yeah, that black looks really good. I like it too. He is very patient. He, well, he, he's overthinking it. He's scared a little. <laughs> You're not scared? That's true, Kat. That airbrush is sitting there. Hey, Mike's here. Hello, Mike. Mike from Stonecoats here. We were just talking about you, Mike, a little bit ago, telling Mike. them that we're going to be introducing some resin. Let Mike know what we're doing here. Mike, this is my husband um, doing his second pour. Says, great job, my friend. <laughs> it's okay. He is done with that cup. Look at those cells. He didn't miss much, Shirley. He just floated his cup around and now he's starting to tilt. He has quite a bit of paint on there. You figure he put five ounces of paint on top of a black base, so some of that he's gonna have to um, get rid of. You can, Nick. You can use stone coat on tiles. Mylene said you're getting better and better. Yeah, that pink corner is, the cells are so pretty there. Nicole, if you can wait a few days, I'm gonna do an unboxing when mine comes and um, everything, all the information will be there. That's um, Cad Yellow, I think. Let me double check. Bright Yellow. Oh, Artist Loft Bright Yellow, sorry. Actually, I think it's Brilliant Yellow. I finished out the tube. Okay. Is that that for a minute? Yeah, Shay called me and told me the package was on the way, so I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Hey, Mike, while you're here, let me show you something I did. Any suggestions for improvements? I'm always open to the artist and the I audience. just I just want to step over you for a second to show Mike the dragon eye. Oh, do I have it right? No. That's our dragon eye that I resined. Do you see the eye right here? So, yeah, we're excited to uh, introduce that stone coat for sure. I did uh, nine resin coatings yesterday and today. So, so what are you going to do with it now, Al? Are you going to airbrush? I think I need a little airbrush. Are you, are you comfortable to airbrush a little bit? You don't push your edgies out? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Your edges? I call them edgies. <laughs> okay, first time with the airbrush. Now remember, hold it like a pencil or a pen. Stone coat is heat resistant, by the way. 
to, I think it's to 500 degrees. Mike, yep. No, you're not holding it like a pencil. There you go, and you wanna go sideways. There you go. He's not touching the paint yet. There you go. Don't go straight in though, you gotta go sideways. Do you want me to show you one? Here, boo. Let me just show you one. What do you want pushed out? This top part here? I think we got excellent structure. Yeah, I'd leave there. that there. And just bring some of this out. You want to go in towards your edge? Work your way in. And then bring it out like that. Same with your pink here. You can work that out. Got it? Yeah, I'm hoping someday I'll have my own brick and mortar and I can teach people how to pour paint and how to resin their paintings. And we have a good time with that airbrush, let me tell you. I did a flip and drag before you got here, Mike, and I'll have to show you when Ellen's done. It says there's an eye in the left side bottom. I'm going to let Mike answer all the uh, resin questions for you while he's here. I'm so excited that he popped in tonight. Yep, it looks like a sheep in a cone of shame. <laughs> Jeez, Al, you're doing a pretty good job. Nate, I have not done that. I had a couple of people um, in the, our county, I should say, not our town, but our county, asked me to come and do some workshops. Um, but the drive itself, and then what would they do with their wet painting? I, the most I would be able to do is probably teach them how to mix their paints and do a demo because if I had them pour, um, it was in a community building and couldn't leave them there to dry, so. I'm right there with you, Terry. I did a bunch of coasters, took them home when I went on vacation, and my mom says that hers still sticks a little bit, so. And that was the that's why I bought the stone coat, because Mike has a video out there where he puts the hot pan on it and it does not stick or hurt the uh, resin at all. Okay. I think we need to go over it one more time with the... Torch? Torch. Yep. You did, did you torch it at all after you did the paint? Because I don't remember. No. Oh, yours left rings? So that eight days it should not leave rings. But it, it will stick, it'd be a little tacky. I agree, Mike. From watching all your videos, if you guys have not watched Stone Coat's um, videos, please do. He's just starting to do some artwork now. He just did a counter with a sponge. Um, it was amazing, absolutely amazing, the cell action that he got on that countertop. Clean your edges with your fenders. Under, under, under. Oh, you already did them? Oh, go ahead, Mike. That's no problem, hon. <laughs> don't 
They're just here to watch. <laughs> Nick, we'll have a good. Um, that will probably. Let's see what's today, Monday. I should have it probably by Wednesday, so we can do it on Thursday. I can film it on Thursday. If it comes early enough in the morning on Wednesday, I can film it. Yeah, in this in this um, live chat here, um, we are all acrylic pourers. And in Erica's and Jeff's, lives they're all resinous so <laughs> he's getting the both both worlds there do you want to lift it and give them a close-up before you wash up your hands that's pretty cool al See, nothing to be of. yep enough he says there's nothing to be afraid of if he can do it you guys can try it too Good job, Alan. The world digs it. <laughs> okay. It was pretty good for a floating cup. And he got most of his colors to show up, so that was really cool. Going to the drying rack. Good job. You got a one white spot in the back there you want to touch up when you're putting it down. Okay, so we let the man play. Now we're going to get down to business. We're going to do... Um, it was business. I know it was business. I'm just picking. I have to pick on you, Alan. Well, that painting will be available for sale. <laughs> He's already saying, that painting will be available for sale in three weeks. That's if he comes out and does his own... Um, Varnish, cleaning and varnishing or resining, whatever he's going to do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and get these put up and we are going to clean this spot up and then I have two more I want to do tonight, guys, if you can you stick with me. Yeah, I'm going to clean up after you because you do it for me once in a while. Um. I have a girl that I've been watching on YouTube. Her name is Misha. If you've watched Misha Untamed videos where she uses airbrushes and hair dryers, we are going to do for our last one tonight, we're gonna to do another hair dryer to push paint around and see how that comes out. Voila. But I want to stress you guys about the resin. If they're resin when you're done, as opposed to varnish where you have the brush strokes. Because if you really look at this painting, if you tip it just a little bit sideways, you'll have from the resin and it just it just makes certain areas pop up and other areas pop down so it looks almost 3d a little dimensional so that's why I've been doing a bunch and I'm so excited to try the stone coat Liz, Liz reminded me I should have poked a hole in the bottom of the cup yes you should have poked a hole in the bottom of that Thank cup you, with resin or with paint, Jean? Because if you're buying paints, with paint, um, my supplies for a painting now, this is a level two canvas, so let's say 10 bucks for the canvas. If you get it on sale, maybe eight. 
Um, in the paint that you use, let's say maybe three or four dollars worth of paint. Uh, then you have to clean it and varnish it. And your varnish can run you anywhere from a buck to two or three dollars. All depends what kind of varnish you're using. And then if you resin it, um, that's another whole story. So like if I sell a painting and let's say, oh, let me grab my price list just to give you a clue. So this is a 14 by 18 canvas. This would be 7560. Um, with resin, it would be 9060. So I add anywhere between 15 and 20 dollars for resin, and I only charge 30 cents a square inch. There are a lot of artists out there that charge a dollar per square inch. So keep that in mind too. If you're just starting out, um, you don't want to sell yourself short and say, "Oh, I'll sell you this painting for 15 dollars." because that's just ridiculous. Um, on the backs of my paintings, are, I always tape off my edges, and I do the same thing with the resin. So I can show you how clean and crisp those edges are. There's no resin drips on here at all. They're all taped off. I remove the tape after the resin has set. I have no problems getting the tape off. Um, then I put the push pins um, in the corners or like these on the level twos have that little rubber edge there. I can put them in the rubber. Spray the backs um, and leave them to dry or you can use a hair dryer and hit it. It tightens that up so it sounds like a drum and that's what you want. Otherwise your paint's going to puddle too much in the middle. Yes, Mike is going to be with um, Jeff and Erica, I believe, I can't remember if it's this week. Is it this week, Mike? He's going to be pouring with them. You guys have got to watch them. If you're afraid of resin, that's who you want to watch because they're not afraid to show you anything. I'm glad that everybody tapes. <laughs> I have paintings from when I first started that the backs are just horrendous. Um, I find myself going back and painting the back with paint, but that I didn't get it off like here, so now I'm being a little more careful. Okay, dirty pour time, guys. So I definitely want to use some black in this one. Um, Ellen inspired me a little bit to get some depth in my painting. Yeah, it just, when you resin one of your paintings, it's like you take one, let me, let me just show you for example. I'll grab a painting that I just varnished as opposed to resin. Although I do use a good varnish, so, okay, let me grab, this would be a good example. So this is varnish. It's shiny, it's pretty. I don't have any brush marks. But this is resin. It's like glass. I look at this and then I look at this and it's like, gosh, you really should put resin on that. You know, it's just a little, whole different ball game. So, oh, and by the way, guys, this is my sponsorship painting for our giveaway. So if you haven't sponsored the channel yet, um, we are going to take um, donations until July 31st, and the drawing will be the first week in August. So just put that out there. We have a sponsorship button at the bottom, our super chat button. If you want to donate, your name will go into the drawing. Okay. Oh, 
of the one I just showed, Kendra, the, um, the flowers? Is that the one you're talking about? Um, I don't think I have prints of that one, but I have one in the house that I want to get prints of. Um, that was the other flower that I did on the big long canvas, the 30 incher. That one I'm definitely going to have um, stuff in the red bubble with that. I just have to get my cannon out and get some really good shots of some macros, some macro shots. Okay. Well, what you can do is upload them to Redbubble and then people can order them from there or Society6. I'm going to do a dirty pour. Um, no, Kendra, they're not. Black, emerald, green. Okay, so I mixed up that, yeah, that divine wine in my paint mixing video. I definitely want to use that. What'd I do with those? Oh, they're there. And also, we're going to do two house paints on this one. You can, Sherry. Just make sure your canvas is tight. Um, you can always put um, cardboard on the back so it's up against the wood. And that way you can place it um, on cups with the cardboard, and that will keep your resin from puddling in the middle. Um, Terry, I use a satin finish house paint. Bear, um, Dutch boy. Thanks, Mike. Um, I'll be posting that video. I'll, I'll send you a quick email when it's up so you guys can check it out. So Mike will be our resin guy. So I'm glad that he came and popped in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use... Um, I think I'm going to go with gold on this one. Alan's on an important phone call. He kind of bailed on me again. <laughs> so I have Craftsmart Gold, and this is Bear House Paint Essential Teal. Um, Bear Divine Wine. You didn't miss a lot, Paula. <laughs> but yeah, you can rewatch the video. And I need one more. It's not hard for me to teach Alan how to paint because it's just like, just throw it on there. You're fine, honey. You're just fine. You can do it yourself. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and add a solid bronze. Nate wants a metallic blue. How about... Um, I could do a pewter or I could do a midnight blue. Yes, they are, Shirley. Satin finish. Yep. Okay, midnight blue. I just had that bottle earlier because I just filled it. Now I gotta find it. Oh, it's right in front of me. And this bottle is really full. I mean, I was filling it. It was going to overflow, so I don't know how much shake I can get in there. Okay, so I think we're going to need at least three cups of paint. And if this is the first time you're watching me, uh, dirty pours, I don't just flip my cups. I place the color where I want it. <laughs> Terry, I took over the garage. I, I shipped his stuff out to the shed. It's like, bye bye now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put some black in the bottom. That's okay, Mylene. Get your rest, honey. And I'm going to 
gonna top that with the Craftsmart Gold. And then I'm gonna follow with the Bare Essential Teal house paint. This way you'll get to see how the house paints interact with the other paint. And then I'm gonna go with Copper. And I'm going to try to do another layer of these colors. That was not copper. I'm sorry. It was solid bronze. <laughs> and we'll go with, I'm going to do the midnight blue next. I'm just going to layer that on the top of those other two metallics. And add the Divine Wine. I hope I'm not going to regret adding this bur dark burgundy color. Uh, I don't want any white in there. So just a touch of black again. So we can break it up. Some gold. Some more teal. This is going to be a dark painting, guys. And some bronze. That teal is amazing. Some midnight blue. I'm watching the screen as I'm squirting. Because <laughs> my narrator took a break. Actually, they had a big issue at work. He had to step out for a minute. And I think I'm going to shoot some more gold down the middle. All right. To do um, strips. I am doing it for metallic drama. And then I'm going to probably resin this one. Because then when I saw that resin on top of those metallics, it was like, oh, baby. It was beautiful. Okay. So when I talk about the WD-40 in the cup, um, spraying your cups first, and the reason that I love it so much, all the paint comes out of the cup. It makes it easier. If you're rewashing your cups, it makes it so much easier. Just pop that in a bucket of hot soapy water. Oh, I love that right there, that line. Bring it up so you can see it. It's cool. It's cool beans. So I think um, my husband was very proud of me that I didn't go broke on Amazon Prime Day. <laughs> I posted um, on Facebook for everybody to use my shop link to go in and shop because I wanted to not only get a little commission off their purchases, but also got them to go into my shop. So, now, when I do this, um, I always torch it first to get some air bubbles out before I start moving anything. We got lots of cells in there. That house paint played very well. That teal is beautiful. So I'm just going to move it around and try to get all my paints to blend together before I start pouring anything off because I want to see what the composition looks like. I'm going to lose a little bit doing this, but not like pouring it off. Okay, so there we are. So I'm going to go ahead and start tilting. I keep my paint in the middle of the canvas. And I hit rock it till I head to that corner. And I always bring it back to the middle again. And since it's flowing so well this way, I'm going to go ahead and get this other bottom corner. And I cut my canvas because I like to try to keep 
color on the piece without making it all run off because sometimes you lose some of the best things on your canvas when you're pouring your corners off. I have people ask me, do I have to wear gloves? Well, if you don't mind paint under your fingernails, yeah. <laughs> me too, Nate. I'm <laughs> giving it a whole new perspective here. Okay, so I'll just bring everything back to place. She's dark, but she's pretty. I still have not put a mirror up yet. I've been wanting to do that. Let me wipe my hands. That's cool, Mylene. <laughs> I'd like to have a shipping sponsor, wouldn't y'all? <laughs> I'd just like to hand them to someone else and say, here, ship these for me to this address. No, I did not wipe the cup because when I'm doing a dirty pour, it doesn't really matter um, because it does add a few little cells, but I just do it when I do my flip and drags because I don't want that gob of silicone coming out at the end and setting on top. Alan's back. What do we have here? Am I in negative space? No, this is a uh, dirty pour. We used up the house paints. Well, we used the house paints that I used last or mixed the other night. Look at how effortless, effortless this is. Who me? Yeah. I just throw paint on the canvas. It's your your art. This is where you come where it comes into play. When you're layering your colors in the cup. That's where you want to be thinking, what do you want coming out next to each other? Really? Instead of just dumping paint in a, cu in a cup. Yeah, this is definitely going to be gorgeous when it's resin. So that's it for that one, guys. I'm going to give you a close-up. Tons of cells. And that um, burgundy will dry darker. And I think that's the midnight blue that is in that burgundy. So that's where our metallic will be. We have a troll. Get rid of them, guys. You have a troll? Yeah. Is it thing a jiggy or something? No. So my runoff is too dark to, well, I could probably pull one skin here. Kendra did her job. Good job, Kendra. She's awesome. She's on it. lonely skin <laughs> that we'll have from that painting. Are you back on? Did you figure it out? 
Yeah, when they get rid of them, I need to block them as well. Trolls are still here, they said. Kendra will get him. She's the boss. All right. So you guys ready for a little hair dryer action? I'm scared. So the person I want you guys to watch is Misha Untamed. She, um, she's getting popular on YouTube. She does a lot of airbrush work. I have racks, Mylene, that are covered with plastic. I have um, five of them and my kitty's out here. You guys wanna see my kitty? Bring him over here, Allie. You can meet Samson. Sampy? No, I'm not doing a paw print. I did see a guy use his dogs to do painting, so. Here's your kitty. Hang on a minute, let me get rid of this. Being what? Anxious. He's being anxious? Come here, boo boo. Oh my god, you're so heavy. He's so big. He's so big. Wait, wait, wait. Say hi, Sampy. Can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> oh, I'm this man. Okay. Oh my goodness, he's getting fat. He's heavy. He's gold. Tabby, let me tell you. Okay, let me set up for that. We've had him for quite a while. This cat has been, he's on his probably his ninth life. He's been stuck under our neighbor's house for 12 days with no food or water and lived through that. He's been trapped in people's garages for days. He is, he's nosy. Definitely. Okay. So I'm going to put the white down and just place some colors and we're going to blow it around a little bit. Misha is awesome. You have to go check her out. I know a lot of you are already following her, but um, I gave her a shout out um, on her channel that I was going to mention her tonight. And that's what I'm doing. I love to watch her. That is a big canvas. That is, that is an 18 by 24. You gotta have a big canvas for the hair dryer because the paint just goes flying. So I'm just gonna. Did I see orange? Somebody says that they want orange. No orange. <laughs> I definitely want the Naples yellow and the cobalt blue hue. Terry said her cat lived for 23 years. Well, I think Samson has got to be about 11. And Terry's grounded herself from Hobby Lobby. I don't go to Hobby Lobby. I think they're overpriced, even with a coupon. Because you can't just buy one thing when you go in there. Right, Al? <laughs> Alan knows how I am when I go to those craft stores. I don't go to Joanne's because they don't have anything as far as art stuff. They didn't even have my deco art metallics. They have some art stuff. They have though. some art stuff, but not like Michael's. I just order online. It's just easier. It's fun. Have you guys seen on my Facebook page the, the chubby little um, Asian boy, how he dances when he gets the email that his order has shipped? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Who wants to know what Misha's YouTube page is? Misha Untamed. I think it's M-E-I. Kendra just 
M-I-E. Thanks, Kendra. Is it I-E or E-I? I don't know. I'll link it when I get done with this video. I'll link it underneath as long in, as well as the red bubble because I forgot to put that in there. Okay, so we have some paint on the canvas now. Now it's time to play. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and place some color. This is gonna be messy and fun at the same time. Almost do swipes with these on there like that. <laughs> Bring her back wants to know what type of canvas do you usually get? Um, I like level twos or level threes. Uh, level threes are gallery wraps, and level twos are the double frame. And I get them at Michael's. Somebody say something about the sound. No, no, likes the slashing sound. Oh. Okay, um, Nate, pink? <laughs> I think that purple red or dark mauve. Yes, no? <laughs> Let's do a, somebody say deep turquoise. Burgundy? That divine wine, that house paint, we could we could try. I definitely want to get a metallic in there. Besides that, magenta, orange in the sky. I don't think and I want. Turquoise. I don't think I want orange. But I'm gonna take a little. I don't want black because that'll give me gray. Everybody say turquoise. Yep. <sighs> Do I want a deep turquoise or a light turquoise though? Mary said lavender. We'll get mud of lavender, I think. Light turquoise. Forest green. Okay. Um, I'm looking to see what ones I have that are that teal base. Nate wants to know where is your blue? It's coming right here. Look. <laughs> turquoise close enough. Light blue. I feel like I'm making a train wreck here. I need something metallic through here. So I'm going to. It's never seen this method. I don't want terracotta. terracotta Prussian. Prussian. Where's my ear? Uh, my iridescent Prussian would probably look pretty Rose in there. Gold, copper, silver, dark patina. Kinds of that dark patina would be cool too. Let me do this. I just want to put a little iridescent Prussian blue in here, and then I'm going to put some patina. We can add a little bit, and it's going to get noisy. Yeah, the copper. copper would be pretty next to that burgundy, but I want to get that patina in here. Metallic brown. Jean wants to know how come some of her comments and questions show up and some don't. I don't know. No, I have not, Nate. Um, remember I told you I was afraid of that bleeding when I cleaned them? I'm going to shut the air off, Al, so I don't blow a fuse and lose my lighting. <laughs> okay. 
We need to fix something random or something that doesn't go well. I've done that before um, and got lucky a couple of times, but usually I get mud. And I, you know, I know my color wheel. I know better, but yet I still do it. Okay, guys, I'm going to turn the air on now. Kendra said that the problem is... some black in there because I've got too much of the greens and blues blending together oh, let's see yep. somebody agrees with you about black okay and then Marilyn wants to know is that a hair setting first so your first click is the cool and it has the uh, the attachment as well I want to take that off of there I just want to see what the difference will be thin line thin lines of silver I don't want to put silver with this though that's the whole thing that patina just does not go and I really thought it was gonna Robin is joining us from Memphis. Hi, Robin. Welcome aboard the crazy train. <laughs> um, Terry wants to know, is that a hair dryer or is that for paint? It's a hair dryer. Just think of it as a high-powered airbrush. Yeah, high-powered airbrush for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's better with the, it's better with the attachment. I'm gonna blow this black out and then I'm gonna go in with a color down the middle of it. So that's where you want to watch so you don't get too muddy. So we'll place more color there. Something new, something different, something to play with. Yeah, we're definitely gonna put some more color. Trying to get that pan seat, that patina off of there. Okay, so I kind of know where I want to go with this now. Betty Ann says this is her first live stream here. All right. 
I just want to put just a drizzle of black through there to um, break up that patina. What about a little metallic gold over the black? The problem with that is though when you go blow, it it just totally gets lost. That's that's what I'm afraid of. Anyway. You are refreshing. We'll try a little bit. I want something here and something here. And I think probably my best bet would be Misha. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> she rocks. She rocks the hair dryer. Anyway, red and blue make purple. All right, let's try this one more time, guys. Terry, you can't be afraid. She said your sweet tone in your voice We're makes her not afraid. Hi, Ellen. We're buffering. It's not telling me to reconnect, so. But it says it's reconnecting. Yeah. airbrush because that gold as soon as I pushed it it just totally got lost so I saw a microphone hit the floor and I thought oh it's my mic are they posting or are we yeah, just still... okay Carrie says it looks purple and Margaret says looking good sometimes these connections um, loosen up on the airbrush and you lose a little bit of your air power, but it's fixable. You just twist it. The Great Wall of China. We're going to call this hot. We're going to call this um, mass confusion. <laughs> Or in Stuart's terms, look what I can do. <laughs> do you guys remember Stuart from Mad TV? <laughs> look what I can do. Robin says, she thanks us for doing the live videos. I don't talk very much, but I enjoy them all. Patty can't be afraid of the airbrush. I wasn't. Yeah, Ellen went right in for it. Didn't scare him at all. I was scared for him. Hold on, guys. This, I really love this technique. Can't wait to try it. It's fun to try it. Um, this is my second try at this, and I didn't do well on my first one at all. That video is up there somewhere. I gotta turn this around a little bit. Sally loves the fact that I'm involved. I do too, because he's my. Honey, grab me this. Honey, grab me that. <laughs> 
It's hard to do a live by yourself because you can't read the comments and paint at the same time. Um, good night. night, Mylene. Sorry we put you to sleep, Mylene. Yeah, she's got to rest up. She's got lots going on. Nate's cooking. He's cooking rigatoni. What time's dinner, Nate? He's in a, I think he's in a different time zone than we are in, too. It is kind of late for dinner, though, don't you think? <laughs> you could have came to my house, Nate. We had stuffed chicken breast and fresh green beans fried with, fried with bacon. Everything's good with bacon. Well, yeah, that's true. Okay, so now I'm just gonna push some of this black out, like I do on my flip and drags. I love Sloppy Joes, don't I, honey? Mm -hmm. Sloppy Joes and potato chips for dinner. Never trust a person who doesn't like bacon. That's true. I need to just, um, tone down that purple a little bit and put a little more here and I think I will be happy with it there. What do you think? How's it look on the screen there, Welchie? On the screen it looks white. It looks white. Yeah. Oh, you mean here? No, I mean right here. On our screen here on the laptop. Well, that's because you're not live. Duh, push play. <laughs> and people think I'm blonde and hey. Alan, you give us blondes a bad rep. I have to watch in the monitor because I can't see what the reflection here as well as I would like to. Carol's off the bed, 4 a.m. Tuesday there. Carol must be in England or Ireland. Carol Walker. No. Night, Carol. <sighs> and that Kathy is going night-night. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. Sally says she needs to buy an airbrush. Hit it in my Amazon shop today or tomorrow or whenever you can. They're $49.96 in my Amazon shop. And that is with the shipping. Okay, and Patty wants to know, are you using paint or just the air? I'm using just air. I don't put paint in my airbrush. I need something right here with this per see Ellen in the monitor. I need something right here. Lynn is joining us from Alberta, Canada. I think it needs more turquoise. But I don't remember which one I used. <laughs> I don't remember. Robin says beautiful as always. It just needs a little more color there in that spot. Uh, maybe a little more yellow. In that spot? Organized chaos. It is organized chaos, isn't it? It's not organized, it's just chaos. <laughs> I know, we keep you all up late, don't we? That's because we do so many videos on our lives. If we just did one painting, mm -hmm. I meant painting. If I just did one painting, we'd be out of here in half an hour. But everybody just wants to see so much stuff, and they always ask me, can you do this Monday night, or can you do this? So I do it, because they ask. Okay, I think I'm just going to put that in there, and I think I'm going to just step away. <laughs> just a 
Oh, that was cute. The end of my airbrush fell in there. Maybe that's why I wasn't getting the pressure I wanted. Did you unscrew my airbrush when you used it? I did not. <laughs> Don't be blaming me. Yeah, Nate showed me um, uh, uh, pictures in a video today with um, a root applicator hair color bottle. There's a girl on um, YouTube that does it. I think it's acrylic pouring with Tina. And then Nate did one, and his came out absolutely beautiful. But he said his problem was the bottle only holds four ounces of paint. <laughs> So, you'd have to get a bigger bottle. I don't know, Alan. Are you doing another pour next week? I think next week we should do that bucket pour. No, I'm not doing the bucket pour. All right, guys. Um, this is pretty crazy. I actually kind of like it now that I've been looking at it for, what, 20 minutes? <laughs> So I, how much was your blow dryer? Um, I think it's, I want to say it's like 21, maybe. It might be less. It's in the Amazon shop. Just check it out. The links are below. Beth wants to know, are you going to do a reverse pour on Tuesday? Oh, I could do another one of those reverse, but I want to use black this time. I dig the crazy, too. See, you guys are like me. I love abstract art. I don't like anything to be absolutely perfect because to me it's just like, ah, it was just so planned when it looks perfect, and I don't like anything planned. That's why she likes my art. That's why I like yours, yeah. You know, I'm not digging that patina in there where it blended, but when it dries, it may look totally different. The colors may, um, because we have some metallics in there. Chris says, really loves doing string art. Been watching people do wings lately. Yeah, the wings are pretty cool. I have not tried one. Um, I just know it wouldn't work for me. I love watching everybody's epic fails. I think it's kind of cool that they actually try. Some successes. Yeah, there's been quite a few successes. But I did get some new yarn, guys. I got this big, heavy, chunky yarn. Um, I want to try a string pull with that. So maybe we'll put that Actually, I may film this tomorrow. Um, I have, I'm shooting four videos tomorrow, so you guys will have something to watch all week. And... Kim says, another great night. Love your work. Thanks, Kim. You're welcome, Rona. Yeah, the, those wings, they're tough. It's hard to layer that color in the cup so that it comes out right. It's all in that white, that last puddle of white to push down through the color and separate all that. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, if you have suggestions for next week, things that you want to see that um, I have not done yet, I'd be more than happy to give it a shot. Ooh, I'm dropping paint. And... Nicole says she's got to go shop her husband. Yes. Hit my link, go to Amazon, do your shopping, um, kitchen restock for your bottles and all that stuff too. Check me out on Redbubble. I will put that link in. It's redbubble.com and then it's under Christina Welch. If you want um, pillows or, or cell phone prints. Uh, Thank you, Nate. Um, as always, Etsy. I still have paintings for sale on Etsy. We didn't do too good on our sale but that's okay push resin with that blow dryer. um no i use a heat gun so i don't need it but when we start doing the tints with the resin yeah we probably could use that hair dryer so that was one of the reasons i bought it anyway you're welcome back glad you could join us nancy good night good night so if you're not on facebook um hit the link below Come hang out with us on Facebook. If you have questions or requests, you can send them through me there. Um, my email is christinawelchart at yahoo.com. You can also contact me that way. All right, Shirley. And sponsorships will take until July 31st. 
Uh, PayPal link is below if you want to sponsor the channel and get in on the drawing. Sally wants to know, do you do a live every Monday night? I do do a live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So Good hang night, out Sally. with us again. Hit that notification button on the subscribe tab there and you'll get notified when we go live and when I upload new videos. So like I said, if you think of anything you want to see, shoot me an email or a message and I'll see what we can do about getting it on there. I'm Either. up for my next challenge. And Alan's up for his next challenge, so go ahead and do some, some suggestions for that as well. So um, thanks so much for watching. It's been fun, and we'll see you all next week, and I will have videos for you um, after tomorrow. Night, guys.